URC folks this morning got up and watched me some Connacht and Scarlet's pretty messy weather in Galway. That seems to be kind of par for the course, man. Rain, wind. I feel sorry for Jack Cardi having to kick there all the time because they don't get many of them. I don't think there's a single kicked conversion in this game. But uh, yeah, we'll go through some key events and some stats. You guys can let us know your thoughts. It was pretty tight at half time, but man, did Connacht manage to kind of blow Scarlet's away in that second half. I mean, 28 seconds for the first try. Niall Murray, I like the look of that guy. He's been playing pretty well. Uh, he kind of came onto my radar earlier this year when I was looking for like uncapped players and Niall Murray, uh, like uncapped at test level. Um, seems like a pretty tidy young player, doesn't he? Uh, but charges down Hardy and uh, sure enough is able to Dot the ball down, 28 seconds, man. Crazy, crazy stuff. 5-0 to Connick early, but admittedly, Scarlet's hit back with a penalty almost immediately. So only a two-point deficit, really, for the Scarlet's for a pretty soft one. Although, um, I said the, the kickers didn't get any conversions. They did manage a few penalties, like Cardi got a long-range one. Um, not that long later, I think they said it was like his first, was that his first, like, kick over this season? Anyway, eight points to five, so kind of that uh, that lead restored. Um, bit of a kicking duel both sides. Like, I mean, in those conditions, I kind of can't blame them. But uh, a relatively poor kick sees Johnny McNichol run it right back at the uh, the Connick guys and set up Steph Evans for a try on uh, 14 minutes. So eight points apiece, man. The game has been absolutely tit for tat. Neither side is really on top at that point, and both sides will be a little bit uh, peeved with how they can kind of concede at those tries, like a poor kick, setting up the Scarlets one. Although, you know, credit to Johnny McNichol for backing himself. He loves a he loves a, a run back from a kick, doesn't he? And then uh, the charge down one for the Connick guys when they scored it, the Scarlets guys won't be too pleased. So, yeah, eight points apiece. Scarlets did give a um, a soft one away when they put a late shot, and I think it was on Carty. Uh, a late tackle, but um, Cardi missed the resulting penalty anyway. Both sides kind of lacking a little bit of cohesion. Um, some knock-ons. I mean, the Connick guys just love chucking the ball around despite the conditions. I guess they're used to it, but still a few too many knock-ons. Scarlet's line-out was not operating well at all. Um, 28 minutes, Cardi did kick a bloody nice one, 50-plus metres with the angle uh, to make it 11-8. Connick back in front, but then they conceded a penalty immediately, so Scarlet's made it uh, 11 points apiece. Interestingly, after the half-hour mark, Connick, when they had a penalty pretty much straight out in front in, uh, in Scarlet's 22, opted not to take the three, which had been kind of the, um, the order of the day up until that point, but uh, it paid off. It paid off. The scrum looked a little bit messy, but man, Jack Carty with a massive wide pass uh, to Mac Hansen, who goes over for a try in the corner. And he'll feel good about that because he was the one who kind of got stepped by um, by McNichol for the Scarlet's try. So good for Hansen, man. And uh, another misconversion, but 16 points to 11. Connick went close uh, before half time. Hansen again popping up like on the right side this time. Um, put Porch into some space, but Scarlet's managed to win a breakdown turnover to, uh, to send them into the sheds with only... That five-point deficit. So the position's pretty tight, but I mean, Connacht have had 70% territory. They've had almost double the run meters, 186 to 102. But key for the Scarlets, guys, four turnovers to zip. It's kind of been keeping them in the game towards the end of that first half. Can they keep that up in the second half? No, they can't. But it's interesting as well, because Connacht are hot on attack in the start of that second half. But they end up getting yellow carded. Um, it's Paul Boyle, the number eight, gets pinged for kind of a tip clean out. It was a weird one. I didn't look like he pulled him that much beyond the horizontal. It looked like there was um, more than one player involved in uh, in moving the Scarlet's guy. But either way, he gets yellow carded for a tip clean out. As Connick were kind of hot on attack, so it's an easy exit for the Scarlet's guys. But do Scarlet's convert on any of this pressure? No, they, they still stay under pressure despite having the extra man. It's, it's bizarre. Um, Scarlet's can see the penalty. The Connick guys go for touch, they maul it, they go through some phases, and um, on 53 minutes, Angier goes over. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bizarre one. I really thought if the Scarlets are going to do anything, it needs to be now, and then 
No. I mean, they managed to kick three points when uh, Patchell came on at the end of the yellow card period, but they, they, they really didn't have much going on at all. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's back to a seven-point game with that penalty, 21-14, if nothing else. But literally two minutes later, I think they give away like a high tackle and, um, yeah, kind of take the three back. So 24-14. At 24-14, it didn't look like the game was going to go Scarlet's way. And then on 67 minutes, they missed the penalty. When they finally did have some some pressure down Connick's end, I wrote game over at that point. Sixty seven, like Scarlets needed to get back within seven, and didn't do it. So I was pretty sure Connick would um, get it done from there. Sure enough, they do. But I mean, Patrick kicks a dead on sixty eight. Like the ball just keeps rolling and rolling. Hanson doesn't uh, touch it until it goes over the dead ball line. So it gets worse for them. Uh, Connick by this point are just looking for a bonus point, really. And uh, they'll get it, man. They um, The Scarlets guys gave away a million penalties at the end of that game. They get warned. And then eventually, uh, I think it's Cullen Buffone gets yellow carded. He's been a bit of a penalty magnet towards the end of that second half. And um, the Connick guys more. And uh, they end up getting a penalty try on 73. So that's the that's the bonus point. No need to kick the conversion. And it's a second yellow card for the Scarlets. So the Scarlets finish this game with 13 men on the field. And uh, Connick, just to rub a bit of salt on the wound, get one last try through Mac Hansen. It's a kick through. And um, him and, uh, was it McNichol? Both trying to touch the ball down. And the, the TMO has to determine which hand gets there first. He determines it is a green hand. So uh, Connick get one last one. And it's another chance to kick a conversion. But it's, uh, it's another missed one. It's Hawkshaw taking the last few kicks. But... Not doing any better than Cardi did. So, um, yeah, man, good bonus point win for the Connick boys. Bit disappointing for the way Scarlet's finished the game. Uh, Possession finishes 54-46 to uh, the Connick guys. Uh, Territory 64-36. So, um, yeah, Connick on the right side of both those ledges. Run meters 336 to 312. Not that much in that, but defenders beaten 16-9. And turnovers one finishes 5-1. So... Uh, Scarlet's not able to have that same effect at the breakdown as they did in the first half. Offloads, man, 12-6. Connor, in those conditions, as I said, just chuck the ball around like mad. Sometimes to their own detriment, but when it sticks, it sticks. Uh, a fair few kicks, 30-31, to 31, which, considering the conditions, makes sense. And uh, the Scarlet's conceding a couple more penalties, 13-11. to 11. The majority of those in their own half. So, yeah, Mac Hansen, a couple of tries, beats five defenders, 62 meters, a couple of offloads. Uh, McNichol chews up some run meters as well. Uh, Cullen Buffoni, 16 tackles, but also a yellow card and too many penalties conceded. Dan Thomas, uh, apparently he's on a short-term deal with the Scarlets, gets a couple of turnovers. Um, Connor Oliver, 15 tackles from him. So there you go, man. Uh, the Connick boys are away to Ospreys, so their Welsh run continues, although away from home next. And the Scarlets, home, but to Leinster. So we're not going to get any easier you guys let us know your thoughts on the game um where do you reckon both these teams are sitting because neither of them was looking that flash going into this game but certainly can come out looking the better of the two after this one you guys let us know your thoughts and um, yeah, see you later.